Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. Digital photography is easy, instant, and mostly fuss-free, and this extraordinary technology has changed photography in ways that wouldn't have been possible just a few years ago. Sometimes, though, it's nice to get back to the simpler ways of film, and it doesn't get much simpler than a classic all-manual rangefinder. Rangefinders give a simple and pure photographic experience, uncluttered by menus and automation. It's a slower, more authentic experience that reminds us what photography is really about. And while some film rangefinders, Leicas for example, are among the most expensive of cameras, the Leica-derived copies from the former Soviet Union are among the cheapest. Today we're looking at three FSU rangefinders from Fed and Zorki. They're simple, well-made and reliable little machines that'll give you the authentic rangefinder experience for a fraction of the cost of a Leica. If the first of these cameras looks familiar, there's a good reason for that. It's an almost identical copy of the 1932 Leica II, the camera that's usually credited with pretty much inventing 35mm photography. This then is the authentic 1930s rangefinder experience. The Zorki one was made from 1948 to 1956. This one dates, I think, from around about 55, 56 sometime. And there were about 800,000 of them made, so even today there are still plenty around. Although they lack the polish and finesse of a Leica, the engraving isn't quite as fine, the film transport mechanism isn't quite as smooth, they're very well made and some parts seem rather better made. It's quite common to find 30s and 40s Leicas with faded rangefinder mirrors, but I've yet to find a Zorki with the same problem. These are reliable and rugged cameras that, in use, are pretty much indistinguishable from the Leica original. This camera is a timeless piece of industrial design, a perfect example of form following function. The top deck is simple, clean and uncluttered. The film wind knob and film counter are on the right, with the film rewind release lever and the shutter button right next door. Shutter speeds from 1 25th of a second to 1 500th of a second are selected by lifting and turning the dial, which should only ever be done after winding on to avoid damaging the camera. In the centre is a cold shoe, and on the left is the film rewind control. Just like the Leica 2, these cameras have separate windows for the rangefinder and viewfinder. To focus, look through the rangefinder window on the left, then turn the lens to align the split image. When you're focused, move your eye to the right-hand window to compose, and when you're ready, shoot. The shutter on all these cameras is made from two horizontally running cloth curtains. It's a reliable and long-lived design that gives very good service, but precisely because of that cloth shutter, you should never point these cameras at the sun because you'll burn a hole right through it. These cameras all use the Leica 39mm thread mount, so there's a massive range of lenses that will fit, from manufacturers like Reed, Canon and Leica, although the FSU lenses are of such high quality, they're really all you need, and there's quite a range available too. They're mostly copies of pre-war Zeiss designs like this Indostar 22 collapsible, a Tessar clone, or the Jupiter 8, a 50mm f2 sonar clone, or the Jupiter 9, 85mm f2, another Zeiss sonar design. I love these FSU lenses. I've used them for many years on both film and digital and they make some really fantastic images. Do remember though that with any lens other than a 50mm you'll need an auxiliary finder like this one to frame accurately. Just turn the barrel to find the right field of view for the lens. 
These cameras have no built-in light meter, so you'll need an external one, either a standalone meter or a phone app, to calculate exposure. That or learn the Sony 16 rule. Film is loaded through the bottom of the camera and it is a bit fiddly. You have to trim the leader too, but it becomes much easier with practice. There's a video on this channel explaining how to do it and there are loads more online as well. Perhaps the best thing about the Zorki one is its size. These cameras are tiny and with a collapsible lens like this Indostar, they'll fit into a pocket albeit a fairly large pocket, making it an ideal walk-around camera. The Leica version of this camera with a 50mm f3.5 lens will cost around three to four hundred pounds. A good Zorki one or Fed one, that's a Ukrainian Leica copy with a 50mm f3.5 lens, can be had for around 40 to 70 pounds and that's got to be one of the best bargains in vintage cameras today. Over time, the Russian camera industry refined its designs while keeping the basic technology much the same. And while the Zorki 4 is perhaps the best known of these refinements, other, more short-lived designs were nevertheless very capable, like our next camera, the Zorki 6. It immediately looks like a more modern camera and, in 1963 when this one was made, it must have looked very modern indeed. It's an altogether squarer design, perhaps inspired by the Leica M cameras, and there are a number of technical innovations over the Zorki 1, the most important of which is probably the combined rangefinder viewfinder window that allows you to focus and compose simultaneously. As a result, this camera is that bit quicker and easier to use. There's a diopter adjustment for the viewfinder too, which adjusts its focus to suit your eyesight. The top deck's even simpler than the Zorki 1, a real study in minimalism. On the left is a combined shutter release and film counter, and the wind lever makes winding on much quicker. There's a push button to disengage the shutter when rewinding film. The shutter speed dial is right next door. And this is the only Soviet rangefinder on which the shutter speeds can be changed before or after cocking the shutter. Again, there's a cold shoe in the centre and the combined rewind knob and film type reminder is on the left. Loading is much easier with this camera. Lift the latch and the hinged back opens to reveal the Leica type cloth shutter and a fixed film school. Much easier and far less fuss to load. Other technical improvements include a rangefinder with a base almost twice as long as the original Leica distance, said to make focusing more accurate, although I've never found any problems with the older type. It has a self timer for film era selfies with a delay of about 20 seconds and strap lugs so you can attach a carrying strap. This camera too will mount any L39 rangefinder lens so there's a huge range of glass to choose from. It's that bit easier and quicker to use than a Zorki one and in that sense it is a more modern camera. It's a little cheaper too. Good examples of these go for around 30 to 50 pounds, sometimes less, which for a fully featured all manual rangefinder is very good value indeed. Our final camera today is from Fed, the main competitor to Zorki in the Soviet photographic industry. It's the Ukrainian made Fed 3, made between 1961 and 1970. There were two Fed 3 models, mechanically they're almost identical, but they do look rather different. The later model has a more modern, rectangular look, similar to the Zorki 6, whereas the earlier model is a rather striking piece of Soviet industrial design and is probably rather more attractive to modern eyes. Despite appearances, under the skin, this camera is another Leica clone, and though there are differences in detail, there are strong similarities to the Zorki models. 
Not the least of these similarities is the Leica 39mm lens mount. This camera has a 50mm f2.8 Indostar 26, a Tessar design and a very sharp lens, but it'll mount any L39 rangefinder lens. The entire back of the camera is removable for easy loading and inside we find the familiar Leica style cloth shutter, exactly the same design found in the Zorki cameras. The top deck is broadly similar to the Zorki 6. There's a combined film advance control and next to that is the shutter release, surrounded by a collar to disengage the shutter for film rewinding. Next, we find the shutter speed selector, lift and turn to change after winding on, and this camera has slow speeds too, so shutter speeds run from 1 second to 1 500th of a second plus B. In the centre is a cold shoe, and on the right is the film rewind control. These cameras have a combined viewfinder and rangefinder with a diopter control placed around the eyepiece. Turn it to adjust. The early Fed 3 is a fantastic looking camera with loads of 50s Soviet style. I think the later camera is less good looking, but both are very capable. And I always found the Fed cameras to be slightly better finished than their Zorki cousins, though not necessarily any longer lasting. They're often a little cheaper too, an early Fed 3 can be yours for around 30 to 50 pounds, a later one for around 20 to 40. And for a reliable, well made rangefinder camera, that seems like outstanding value. So, three fantastic little rangefinders from the former Soviet Union. They're all well made little cameras, they'll all give you the authentic rangefinder experience and they're great looking cameras too. But perhaps best of all, they are all fantastic value. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you enjoy the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.